Um, Scott, we're going to talk about the maps of Spay and Real, and then we'll have a break and some tea and coffee out there, and then the uh, discussion will turn to the medley. Uh, before we go any further, I need to introduce the four members of the panel to you, all very distinguished in the pipe band world. On uh, my right, far, furthest right, is Bill Livingston, pipe music of the 78 Highlanders, renowned solo piper, and a winner of the World Pipe Band Championship title uh, with his band. So I'd like to welcome Bill. <laughs> Next to uh, Bill, we have Joe Noble, senior adjudicator for the RSPBA and uh, well known in Grade 1 circles, former world champion solo drummer. So I'd like to welcome Joe. of Alistair Aitken, who's chairman of the Piping Drumming Qualifications Board and also senior adjudicator and one of the most respected figures on the panel. And um, Alistair has been instrumental in the PDQ in pushing it forward and uh, this is the examination system for pipers and drummers and it's been a tremendous amount of work which uh, will be great benefit in years to come, I'm sure. So please welcome uh, Alistair. And finally, on uh, my left, furthest left, is uh, Pipe Major Robert Matheson of Shots and Dyke Head, who needs no introduction really. Robert is a multiple winner of the World Pipe Man Championship title, composer, uh, piper, and uh, all round uh, piping polymath. Uh, so please welcome Robert Matheson. Before we start, I've got some musical illustrations I want to play for you. Uh, any come folks, and uh, let's start off by listening to uh, this first track. Somewhat. 
And these guys here are responsible for it. Now, they just, because they don't adhere to the same strictures as far as I can see, maybe they do, I'm going to shout you down in a minute, and the judges, because they don't penalise it enough when they hear it. They don't say, we don't like the sound of the drums, we don't like the way you're phrasing the marches, we don't like... Geez, you haven't read, read my score sheets then, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, it doesn't seem to be getting through, Bill, that's my point. It's a matter of taste, though, Robert. It's just a matter of taste. You prefer that because you played in that era. You played in a pipe band, you played in that era. And life has changed dramatically. Uh, I mean, what Ian McClellan was doing with that band is very little different from what we're all doing now, which is he, he paid great attention to perfectly metered playing, playing very, very metered, very snappy. Pitch is obviously different, but the playing is very, very precise and typical, I think, of Strathclyde at their very, very best. It's very nitty gritty playing. Not unlike Ian played himself as a great master's playing real So but it's focused. You see, it's fo for me, it's focused. It's, it's expressive, it's focused. It's not really, you know. It, it, and I mean, I, I agree, his personal preference comes into it. There's no question about it. This is all very subjective, you know. But I, I, from a musical standpoint, I, I, would, I have to say, if you were to throw that over, I'd be very interested to know how many people would come down on the side of FM or the side of Strathclyde. I, I think uh, when you listen to the, the Strathclyde, the biggest difference is, is the note values, the address of short notes, specifically in unison, and the tackles and everything spotted together. If you to play individually like, like that, you would do very well because it's too quick. Yeah. So yeah. they've actually, they've even customised these two four playing to such a degree that you, you very rarely heard a low G or a taller roof, and everyone was straight through and everybody played that style. Ending phrase, hum, brum, bra. Yeah, you know, which style is up so much that you're, you're losing a wee bit of integrity of the finger. And in some cases, uh, some bands do that because they don't have the players to put the stuff in anyway. But you heard the field marshal, you could hear the tackles start to get different styles coming through. But the intervals and the chanter and the field marshal were spot on. It wasn't just a pitch difference. If you lifted the strike plate again, they're playing a scale from high A to low A. And you get down to low A and low G, and actually the intervals are wrong. They go down to low. And they're all together but as a scale that intervals are totally out. Now, I could listen to a mediocre piper all night and then tune my pipe. It doesn't matter how good a player you are, I could listen to you if you're back out and you know, tune. And, and their intervals are out there. And I think the pipe have developed totally so much, and the penalty has been or not customising the music to that degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've, they've developed tonally, um, but not the development hasn't led to a full advance. I don't think. I, I mean, the biggest difference uh, from a drumming perspective when you listen to the two recordings is that one tenor drummers were very apparent, and in the other one tenor drummers were there, but they weren't apparent, they were just beating the regular time. So you've now got different voices coming in to the whole the whole picture. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, is another thing. <coughs> so that's, that's up for uh, the whole pipe band game to decide which way they want to go. Uh, to defend the adjudicator slightly, you can only you can only adjudicate what's placed in front of you, you know. You can't say you can't put in a sheet, you know, I, I think any pipe major would be very offended if you if you said, I have got the first. You see, if you played 20 years ago, you wouldn't have been first. I don't think that kind of works. Um, you've got to you've got to play. You've got to decide on the performances that that you listen to. Uh, some of the things that are happening, uh, several of us don't like that it's being driven forward by technology and player power. But, 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 but,